Hi guys, welcome to Management Concepts. Today we're going to talk about a concept of uh, being too passionate in the workplace. Uh, I guess I'm going to answer the question, can being too passionate cause you to fail? And so we're going to talk about how to be passionate in the job but not obsessive. This video is really designed for strategy practitioners and those of you that find yourself getting angry at work. Um, this the video is designed to explain one of the common concepts of the reasons why you may be getting angry at work, stressed out all the time, and generally unhappy, although you think you are in your dream job. Most people have always heard this quote, find something you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. But everyone talks about how important it is to be passionate at work, but allowing things that pay for your bills to define your self-worth can be your downfall. The concept we're going to explore today is really around the difference between what's called harmonious passion and obsessive passion. The question is, can you be too passionate? And here's storytelling time. Uh, when I was young, uh, I was really too passionate at work. I would walk out of presentations with executives and be so upset that they weren't listening or not in favor of a recommended action. And I had a little piece of paper on my monitor I remember a long time ago that said, you know, members or customers first. And it made me forget about stakeholders and staff and community perspectives uh, when I was younger. It made me really hard to work with and worse, made people avoid me in conversations sometimes because I was too passionate. Don't be that person, you know. It can make you dismissive of strategy. For example, there's examples of many leaders who believe in their extreme passion and will overcompensate for fact because of their extreme passion. And worse, confidence in the office stopped sharing those facts as they tired of you not listening to them anymore. It can cloud your business judgment. It can make you take offense and be too emotional, which can prevent you from listening. It can steal your identity. People are so passionate about their, their workplace that they forget who they are. It can make you also become unaware of the present. You risk your relationships and risk enjoying what's happening around you. And there's a big difference between being uh, passionate and obsessive. Uh, there's actually an interesting series of studies from the Norwegian business school that I remember reading from a PhD student, uh, Katrine Birkland was, I think I remember her name was. And she differentiates between two types of career passion, harmonious and obsessive. And harmonious is really where it's good for you. But obsessive is bad for you. It leads to burnout. It, it leads to alienating your friends and family members. And it's also bad for your colleagues. And it's also linked with incivility on the job. There's also some work from a, a professor named Robert Valoran from the University of Quebec locally. who did a recent study on how this type of passion you have impacts your work and life. Um, his research has found that you have, when you have harmonious passion, you feel in control and, when you have a, and you have a sense of joy and purpose in your workplace. But he also found that your passion can be obsessive when it defines who you are and gets in the way of engaging in other areas of your life. And over time, obsessive passion leads to burnout. Uh, there's also a study by Kim and all uh, who talk, talked about eight different, I'll put the link in the YouTube links there for you. Uh, she did an interesting study across eight uh, different studies on exploitation of passion for abuse in the workplace and then demonstrates actually how leaders can take over pa overly passionate workplaces and really abuse them. Um, Simon Sinek in the book uh, Leaders Eat Last, uh, he wrote that, where's this book? I think it's here, yeah, yeah. So this book, Leaders Eat Last, he writes about a ceramic cup story about a former undersecretary under of defense and a ceramic cup. He goes to this conference, I'll paraphrase a little bit, and basically he gets picked up at the airport by a limo, you know, there's some of the sign, he gets checked in by someone else. His luggage is all carried for the for the conference up to the hotel room. He's in the morning. He's brought breakfast, and in the morning, there's a limo driving him to the conference where he's at. And um, but the next year, he goes as the former undersecretary, and he's standing in front of the stage, holding the styrofoam cup at the, at the podium, and saying to everyone that you know. Five years ago or a year ago when I came here as the Undersecretary of Defense, I was given my coffee in a ceramic mug because I was sitting in this green room getting ready to present. But today, rather than having all these people look after me to get me here, today I, I took coach to fly here, 
I had to check myself in. I had to take the bus to this conference. I had to stand in line with everyone else. And I had to pour my own coffee in this styrofoam cup today that I hold for you. And he was saying to the audience at the time through Simon Sinek's uh, book that uh, my most important life lesson as the undersecretary of, or the former undersecretary of defense is don't get attached to the ceramic cup because it's just the job. It's meant for the role and not for you. You know, I saw many VPs in my life uh, leaving uh, one of these, one of the large organizations I used to work at uh, when they got fired or severanced out or let go or forced to resign, leaving with their box in hand, uh, distraught, numb and shell-shocked. It's hard to recover when your identity is your job. My biggest advice too is just like Simon Sinek writes in his book is don't ever let it become you. Make sure you have harmonious passion in the workplace and not obsessive. And so my biggest wish is that you be happy not because of your job as they come and go, but to be happy with your friends, your family, your kids, and your hobby. And here's some ways about how to identify it. To so ask yourself the following questions. Why do you love your job? Is it rewarding, joyful, and are you growing? If your answer is yes, then it's great. But if your answer is that it gives you social status or an ego boost, then you might be obsessive. If you answer that they're you're there to fix all the mistakes of all the dumb people in the workplace, you might be obsessive. If your answer is to ensure that the organization has a devil's advocate and needs to be challenged, you might be obsessive. If you answer that the organization needs a leader and without you it's going to fail, you might be obsessive. Are you spending all your time at work? Are you eating properly? Are you exercising? Are you enjoying time with your friends? Are you enjoying time on your hobbies? These are really important questions. And if you've answered these questions, many with a yes, you're in danger of being an obsessive uh, passion, which is going to cause big problems for you in the long run. So how do you fix it? There's an important concept called social uh, identity theory. I'll do another video of it uh, later on, but in a nutshell, uh, you're mentally more healthy with the more identities you have. That means you're a mother, a father, a daughter, a son, a lumberjack, a counselor, a mountain biker, a hiker, a painter, whatever it is. But the more social selves that you have, the healthier you are. In other words, do you have a life other than work that you're passionate about? And what are you doing beyond just work? What are the parts do you want to nurture or become amazing at and remember to maintain those passions outside of work? There's an interesting study from a, di a professor, a doctor called Dr. Michael Evans, who talks about the references that people that do really well after layoffs are the ones that say, hey, this is great. I'll have a break to spend more time in doing things that I love to do. So for those of you in HR roles, ask the questions during the interview process. What are these candidates' interests outside of work? Make sure your candidates have other, another life that they really care about or they're really passionate about because that's really key. And I hope this helps help you understand the difference between a harmonious passion and what's called obsessive passion and how important it is to maintain a balance between the two so you don't become that weirdo in the office that's always working too hard and always yelling and upset at everyone else. So I hope that helps and I hope you enjoyed that uh, video and hit a, a like and a smash or whatever they call it and uh, please subscribe. Thanks very much. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.